Good morning, folks. We've got key stories to cover today, including space weather. We'll start there, as always, but with solar flares, solar wind, and geomagnetic conditions all quiet, we go to spaceweathernews.com for just some visuals today. The central coronal hole is magnetically connecting to Earth, and because of it, our seismic drought the last few weeks will be ending imminently. The next coronal hole is visible behind it at the limb as well, but south of that, the plasma filament we saw yesterday took its dance moves to another level while showing no signs of collapse or eruption and is turning in towards Earth. Lots to watch, but all quiet right now on the sun, so we come to Taiwan. We've been watching the approach of this typhoon, and it is arriving now. Best of luck to all caught in the path of the storm. Meanwhile, Hastings, Nebraska woke up yesterday to an early morning hailstorm that took out a considerable number of crops that were nearly ready for harvest. But a scarier version of that hit the United Arab Emirates. The wind, the hail, the flash flooding. Significant damage reported from a storm they say basically came out of nowhere. Let's talk volcanoes next. Interesting story on magma depth accessible for explosive eruptions. Turns out water is the key. Too shallow and the effusive releases prevent major pressure buildup. Too deep and the hydrated rocks are softer allowing for compression and shifting without explosive eruption. Turns out 6 to 10 kilometers down is the sweet spot. And speaking of volcanic eruptions, this former Mayan stronghold was the site of a titanic eruption that cooled the entire planet in the 6th century AD. It killed thousands nearby and does mark the key chilling period of the planet between the Roman and medieval warm periods. Quick look at a nova that presents spectacularly. Interestingly, this object was initially in the NGC catalog as two separate objects before Hubble came and showed it's actually the shell release of a star. It's a compact but tremendously powerful display. Up next, we're looking at the life of galaxies, the most massive ones at that. By studying the different stellar motions in heavily merged galaxies, they are able to get a better picture of how those different motions tell a story of its merger and formation history. Interesting article from Gemini linked below. And now for our top news. It was August 7th when we broke the story about the center of the galaxy surging in infrared brightness. We've come back to the topic three times already to review and describe how we want to watch for X-rays and UV spikes next which would indicate a galactic superwave eruption. But today, that same group of researchers from August 7th is doubling down. They've used some of the most complex data recovery processes imaginable to eke out literally an extra decade of galactic center infrared brightness data. And it's not great news. In that extra decade, there was virtually no moves into brightness or quiescence. It was steady as she goes, looking all the way back, which puts perspective on the importance of the infrared surges that have taken place this year. And technically, this must put us on higher alert for those X-rays and UV signatures from the center of the galaxy. If we see the light, the disaster then begins. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.